What's going on, everyone, from Low Kick MMA? My name is Dave Dusky, and I am joined with Angel Pacheco. He is set to make his UFC debut in Atlantic City on, on March 30th against Keelan Lochran. Angel, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for reaching out and getting a hold of me. Yeah, of course, man. So about, you know, just under, uh, or I guess eight days out from the fight, you, you're currently in New Hampshire training at the cartel. When do you head out to Atlantic City? Um, it'll be after Monday practice. We'll be driving out. I'll probably be taking a snooze in the car while Tyson and Brock talk in the front. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be heading out that way. On Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And so for, for this fight, you mentioned, uh, you, you talked me off camera about working with the cartel, but uh, that's obviously the new England crew who've been your main training partners and where have you been training for this camp? Um, Back home, uh, it was a, it was a lot of kind of like mixture of guys. Uh, Santos, I can't recall last names right now. Too many names <laughs> going through my head, but uh, Santos, Tanner, um, them guys back home. But out here, a lot of work with Carlos and Freddie. Um, some work with Rob, obviously, and Calvin. But I'm not really the look Calvin's looking for right now. So, um. But yeah, a lot of work with Carlos, so he's a great wrestler. Um, he's been kicking my butt all camp. It's been fun. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, you know, that's Calvin Cater, uh, whose guys fight coming up at UFC 300 against Aljamain Sterling, coming back from injury. Uh, it's really a a large kind of growing scene out, you know, in the Northeast. You got the Cards yeah. Hell, and then there's so many great fighters in New York, Atlantic City, being New Jersey. It goes all the way down to Philly, you know. Compared to uh, Minnesota, how would you talk about your time training out uh, with the cartel up in the Northeast? Um, so my my gym back home has a mixture of like amateurs and pros, and that's kind of the same of out here. But the pros out here, in comparison, like the level, the skill level, right? Like Rob and Calvin, obviously, they both headlined uh, shows for the UFC before, like that. That's crazy. Um, we got guys like Nick and Tom. Uh, Nick was in the UFC. I'm sure he'll get back there. He's pretty young still. Tom also, he's he's right there. He's pretty close as well. Uh, Connor, too, he's fighting on the same card as me. So there's a lot of UFC guys in the room, either whether it's like current UFC or previously UFC guys. So, uh, and like I said, they got a mixture of amateurs, but everybody's tough there's no real rest rounds i guess the one thing i'll say about my home gym is there's a lot of like beginner beginner level uh guys coming in and sometimes you just gotta kind of work with what you have so that's the biggest difference i think is uh there is no rest really <laughs> yeah so first of all that's uh connor matthews also making his debut uh on the 30th all right let me see if i can get this by the way nick from the carts i'm trying to think about the new card tell members nick is Nick, Nick who? Far, Fairland, Fairland, I believe. I, I, like I said, I suck at okay. last names, but uh, he fought, um, what was it, Bryce Mitchell, I think. Last okay, fight. got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And um, you mentioned Tom. I, Tom so I, Pegg. Tom Pegg. I, I, like, I, so I have a friend of mine who trains at uh, Lozon up in Boston. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's always kind of around the uh, cartel guys. So you, you're saying all these first names I'm trying to like put – yeah, I'm sorry. Together. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm trying I to just, uh, I'm terrible at last names. And I don't want to butcher it and like disrespect these guys. You know what I'm saying? No, you're all good. I'm just trying to put together like, all right, like Calvin's obviously Calvin Cater, Robbie and Rob Font. But uh, t you're training with the highest level guys there. You know, talk to me about training with like, you know, someone like Rob Font specifically, you know, are they not just like the rounds you get, but uh, kind of the information you're able to pick up from them? Like, what what have you been able to learn from those guys specifically? Then also, you know, the coaches up there in the cartel. Yeah, definitely. Um, Like, the the biggest thing I noticed about, like, especially, like, Rob and Calvin is, like, not only do they, like, work on the skills that they're going through, but after practice, they're constantly doing extra. Constantly, like, hey, how'd you get me there? Hey, how'd you, you know, so, like, I try my best to pick brains and like, I'll have a situation where like I'll get stuck somewhere or whatever the case might be. I might just go up to Rob and be like, Hey, what were you doing to like do that effectively? Then we go over the situation. 
and talk over it and then even drill it sometimes. Same thing with like Carlos and the wrestling too. But uh just kind of the 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 fact that their mind never really turns off to fighting, right? Like even though practice is over and they they're probably tired or cut cutting weight or whatever the case might be, they're constantly thinking about it and it's like constantly going through their head. So it's just it's interesting. And even like things that I maybe do without me knowing I'm doing it right, they'll like mention it and be like, hey, like how'd you get to do? Or you know what I'm saying? Like not that there's much of that, <laughs> but uh. It's just like those small things, those small details they bring up and then like talk about it. So um, and kind of like work through the situations too. I, I like, obviously I like working with them and the rest of the coaching staff, obviously Tyson, um, their jujitsu coach Ruben, I've got to work with a lot uh, this camp as well. And it's been nice to kind of get a different uh, view. You know, I've had Brock Larson as my head coach for the longest time, which I still learn a bunch from Brock, obviously, but uh, it's just interesting to see how different people do different things. There's more than one way to skin a cat. So, yeah, definitely a big shout out to uh, Tyson Chartier, head of you know head coach of the uh, Boston Cartel out there. Um, going back to this fight with Keith Walker, first of all, how the fight with him specifically come together? Have you gotten to watch you know footage on him and like what do you think gives you the advantage over him? So it was just kind of like the UFC offered it and we accepted it, obviously. You don't say no kind of thing. Um, I know he's a tough kid. Uh, my advantage, I feel my advantage is I'm going to be able to stay calm under the pressure, right? Like he brings a lot of pressure. He's a very aggressive guy. When he swings, he's swinging to kill you. And then he goes into his wrestling and kind of grinds on you and tries to TKO you on the ground for the most part. But otherwise, he's got some knockouts on the feet, too. So he's dangerous everywhere. But uh, I feel like my stand-up is superior. I don't think uh, he'll be able to catch me. Like, he has some guys. He's, he's a little awkward in his stance and stuff. But I just think my constant pressure and volume will overwhelm him and uh, get him out of there, honestly. I think I'm going to TKO him. Yeah, fair enough. So it's very it's funny for me because I've gotten to I've gotten an interview and talk with Keenan Locker. And when I talk with him, he's one of the most like outgoing, you know, cocky, confident fighters. And we saw that from him in his last fight week. And now I'm talking to you, and you're very, you know, kind of down to earth, kind of cerebral approach to MMA. He's probably gonna come into fight week, you know, talking all this shit. And that's just kind of how Keenan Locker goes around. But because that's something that you know distracts you all, or do you just not even care and you're just trying to get your business done? Um, I mean, I'm sure it works on plenty of people. The the difference is when I'm in there and it doesn't matter who you are, I can be friendly with you. I've had situations where I'm like super friendly and I'm talking to these guys and making jokes and stuff like before the fight. And then I, I still try to kill them, you know, to where if they're hating on me and they're talking a bunch of craziness, that's fine, too. I'm going to try to kill them either way. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm trying to knock you out. I'm trying to do bodily harm, right? Uh, nothing changes whether he's talking crazy or not. And it's not going to change the way I fight, you know? Um, he's going to fight the way he's going to fight. I'm going to fight the way I'm going to fight. Nothing no words are going to change that, right? It, the outcome of the fight is just our preparation. You know, either he did what he did in practice and it's going to work or what I did in practice is going to work. And other than that, it's nothing more, nothing less. I mean, if he wants to get personal about things and stuff like that, that's on him, that's his character or whatever, but I'm not that type of person. I don't really have anything negative to say about him other than I want to knock him out. I'm going to knock him out. That's it. Yeah, fair enough. I think that's a kind of great way to look at it. And you guys are opening this card in Atlantic city, kind of setting the tone for you to be your first uh, walk in the UFC octagon in front of a big crowd. Like how uh, is there any kind of angst going into that first walk in front of, you know, the massive crowd and also getting to open the card. Oh, definitely. I'm sure I'm sure there's going to be plenty of emotions and things like that going through me in that moment. Um, 
I'm just going to have to contain whatever things I'm feeling at that moment. Um, but with that said, he has his own emotions as well. You know, it's his second fight in the UFC, but he's coming off a loss. Uh, we're both coming off a loss. So it's, it's, we're both very hungry to win this. I know that it's not going to be an easy fight just because I think I'm going to finish him doesn't mean it's going to be, be an easy fight. But uh, as for the emotions and things like that, I would be lying if I said, you know, no, I'm not going to feel anything. I'm going to be stone face killer kind of thing because that's not who I am. I will definitely feel some sort of way, but uh, that won't stop my performance. In comparison to, uh, I mean, I guess it's going to be tough to tell until you actually get there, but in comparison to making that walk to the apex for a contender series fight, you know, compared to everything you did before getting to the UFC and the regional scene, how do you anticipate that walk in front of the bigger crowd at Atlantic city kind of changing, you know, being, how do you, how do you, I guess, anticipate that being different than the other walks you've made? Yeah, definitely. Um, Honestly, I'm always like anxious or, uh, yeah, I would say anxious before a fight, right? You're about to try to beat someone up inside of a cage in your underwear or whatever. But um, as for it being different, um, I, I, and this is no dis- disrespect to like Danny or anything, but the, the last time I walked, I wasn't, it was the weirdest thing. And I don't know if it was lack of crowd or what the heck it was, but I almost didn't feel anything. And that sounds weird, but like, it was just like, I, 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 I don't know how to explain it. I felt different. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, I belong here kind of thing. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, maybe I'm just used to fighting now. This is my whatever number of fight overall in my career of uh, combat sports. Maybe it's just gone, the, the feeling of whatever. But then once I got in the cage, I was like, oh, no, no, it's still here kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but the walk was, was very weird. Um, but I, I do think, I'll be energized, right? I I think I didn't get to choose my song or anything like that. I mean, that might sound like cheesy or whatever, but the song I walk out to uh, means something to me. And uh, it just is pride in my culture and, and my dad and like how I fight. So I'm excited. I know I'll be excited. I know I'm going to be happy to make that walk and just go perform and get to. What is that walkout song? It's called uh Tigre de... it's through Tigre de Nortes, Gal de Pelea. It's a it's a guy, it's a Spanish song, but it's a guy talking about how he's willing to die in a fight pretty much. And if you think he can kill him, come try kind of thing. Hey, that, that that's tough and I'm you know, I'm excited to see the the walkout now for it at uh at Lang City. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, so, it's essentially uh, so, Mexican country music. <laughs> God, God. So you're you know of and, and correct and tell me if I'm wrong. So you're of Mexican descent. You say your dad is from Mexico directly. No, no, my father isn't from Mexico. Um, he's actually originally from Oregon. Uh, okay. but he speaks Spanish. My mom speaks Spanish. My mom's from from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, or sorry, Michigan. But they both met in Minnesota, and that's where I was born and raised for the most part. My mom's part Puerto Rican and Mexican. My dad. Mexican descent. I'm third generation, so obviously my family has been here for a while. Yeah, no, I say, guy, and obviously you know Mexico, hey, you know the, the fighting spirit, but also like the rise of Mexican talent throughout the UFC has been, uh, just incredible over the last few years. And you know, as you develop in your UFC career, I know the focus is obviously going to be just next weekend, Keenan Locker at Atlantic City. But like, would you like to get a fight for the UFC in Mexico City at some point? That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd love that. Um, I know they're gonna do like a big uh spear show for Mexican independent show or or independence or something like that. I think in like September. I can't remember exactly what it's for, but I know they're gonna do the sphere in Vegas and I think that would be great to be on also. But yeah, no, I'd love that. I'd love to go down there with my family and <laughs> have some fun, eat some food after the fight. Yeah, definitely make a trip out of it. Definitely. I'm hoping we can uh, get you on that card. I guess looking ahead, you know, if all goes well and you beat Keenan Lochran, what are your goals for the end of 2024? Um. Yeah, so 
assuming everything goes well and I don't get injured or anything like that uh, after the win, I'm actually hoping I can at least get two more fights in by the end of the year. That'd be great. Um, but it, at, at the worst, one more for sure. Um, and just climb, climb, uh, climb the ranks, obviously. Fight whoever the UFC gives me. Um, and hopefully, or not hopefully, but after this performance, I know that they'll like my style and uh, push me more than likely. Awesome. Well, Angel, I'm wishing you the best of luck. And just my final question, March 30th, Angel Pacheco, Keaton Lochran. Angel, give me your official prediction. I'm going to say a second round TKO. There you go. Guys, Angel Pacheco makes his UFC debut in Atlantic City next weekend when he takes on Keelan Lochran. Angel, if there are any teammates, socials you want to shout out, the platform is yours. Uh, yeah, you can follow me at uh, Instagram, Angel Pacheco. And uh, as for teammates, obviously everyone in St. Cloud, Minnesota uh, with Brock Larson, the Start BJJ team, and then out here in New Hampshire. Um, the entire cartel. These guys have been pushing me, making sure I'm ready for this fight. And I'm just excited to go and get a knockout or a TKO, like I said. Awesome. Angel, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.